Many of you have been wanting to know what I do at home, how I work out at home. So I thought I'll show you my 15 minute workouts. I'm going to show you how I do it super slow with I at home use dumbbells, but when I'm traveling, I do the same thing with resistance bands. So I'll show you both uh, how to use both for all the movements. And then I'll do mine to show you how you push till failure. First of all, before we do anything with weights, make sure your form is correct. We want proper techniques so that you don't get injured. So it's important to maintain a neutral spine. Most people don't know what that means. So if I'm not, so this is me just not keeping my spine neutral and my hip tucked, my pelvis tucked. So this is where my core is engaged. This is my core is not engaged and the spine to be arched over here. This leaves the lower back vulnerable and this is all not engaged. So the minute I do this, my core is engaged. Now this is the position I want to maintain for everything I do. So one thing you can do is, it's a PVC pipe, it's lightweight. You just want to visualize that whatever you do, your head is not doing something. If you're lifting a weight, your head is not dangling down like that. You want it to be here. You don't want a massive gap in this part. So if my spine is not neutral, I'll be doing this. If my hip is, if my spine is arching, then you can see how the spine has lost contact you can see this way. Let me get my hand out of the way. So this is, I've lost contact with the pipe. Now if I'm engaged, the gap has closed. So this is now nice and packed. And so the, the bum, the spine and the head are all in one straight line. And you want to be moving like this. The spine should not, so if you're not careful, and it's okay if it's slightly moving, but you definitely don't want a full disengagement of your core. So this is considered neutral in all the movements. And I'll, be, I'll bring this back up when we're doing push-ups, when we're doing squats, when we're doing deadlifts, when we're doing um, anything where you're lifting something heavy from the ground, you don't want to let go of the spine, okay? So that is a big thing with the PVC pipe. The other thing is to keep your shoulders away from your ears. So there will be exercises where we're doing this, or there will be exercises when we're doing this. We don't want the shoulders scrunching up like that. So whenever I'm doing a push or a pull movement, we wanna keep, we wanna keep, if it's a pull movement, we don't want shoulders to be next to the ears. We want the shoulders to be down here. This engages your lower back. And then from here, you're going to be doing the pull movements. The other thing is, if you're doing a push movement, you don't want to be like this in the push-up, at the top of the push-up. You don't want to be like that. So you want to be shoulders away from the ears, activating the lower back, and then you're doing your push-up. And I'll, I'll, I'll do this again when I'm doing the push-up, but right now I just want you to see the correct form, keeping shoulders away from the ears, activating the lower back keeping the pelvis tucked, keeping the spine neutral. These are the ways to avoid injury. Okay, so you can start with this as a warm up. in fact, is a wall sit. You're at 90, 90. Your back is pressed into the wall. There's no arch, there's no space between you and the wall. And you stay here till you shiver and shake and can't stay here any longer. If this gets too easy for you, after 60 to 90 seconds, you can actually pick up a weight and do it with a dumbbell so that you fail in about 60 seconds. So for a squat, I want you to make sure that your posture is good. So I'm about to start my squat. So just so you know, throughout the movement, I want to keep my spine safe. So before I start, I want to make sure that I'm mostly this way. So even when I get up, I don't want to let go of my spine being this way. So that's my posture check. And I'm using a band that is going to give me 60 kg resistance. We're going to go up for five counts, come down for eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, 
three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, after you've done four of these, you're going to hold for about 10 to 15 seconds against that pressure. So it's obviously the hardest as you get to the top. And I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm trying to make sure the band doesn't push me to the ground. I'm resisting and I'm pushing up. Hold that for 10 to 15 seconds and you'll feel everything shake. As you get stronger, you'll be able to do this with heavier and heavier resistance. So I've just shown you how I do this with a 60 kg black band. If you're traveling, there are various versions of this you can get in different colors. And I'll share the link in uh, the description below this video so you can look it up and see which one you want to buy. Obviously, when you're starting off, you want to start with something light and then work your way up as you get stronger. If you're at home and you have dumbbells, I'll show you how to do this with dumbbells as well. So these are 7.5 kg dumbbells. Again, remember what... You don't want your spine to be arched like this. This is dangerous for your spine as you go down. So you want to be tucked. Your core is engaged. See how that looks when you're not engaged. And then the six pack shows up just because you engage. You start to see it. So if you're doing this with dumbbells, you go down as long as you can go, as low as you can go, till you keep your spine neutral. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll just show you basically with the dumbbells how you can still stay low and hold that position. Now, danger would be if you do this. So don't do that. Stay engaged. This is how you stay safe, using dumbbells, holding this after you've done those same counts for a total of, you wanna be failing around the 60 seconds mark. So four rounds of the five plus eight, and then pushing like this halfway for about 10 to 15 seconds. So now we're going to do a deadlift. See, with the squat, you're challenging the front of the thigh and to some extent the back of the thigh if you're going lower than a 90. You're also involving the back of the thigh. Of course, you're involving the lower leg. Now we're going to do a deadlift. So in the deadlift also, you don't want to lose contact with this neutral you know, spine and activated core. What we're going to be doing is a single leg deadlift that also gives you balance and you're visualizing your butt going towards the back wall. And you're coming up. You're not, you don't want to lose too much contact. Now, at some point, there may be some movement in your spine, but you're not, you're not losing full arch. You're not losing the, the tucking of the pelvis. You're staying pretty tucked. This is tucked. This is not tucked. So this is a tucked spine. And your, your goal is to move your butt towards the back wall. So it's not this, it's move the butt backwards. It's not this, you're not trying to get your head to the floor. You're trying to push your butt backwards. So if you're trying to push your butt backwards, the more this goes back, you will feel the stretch here. And that's the hamstring. So you want to stretch the back of your thigh. So we're going to do five seconds down. Eight seconds up. One, two, three, four, five. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Ah, uh, wasn't slow enough. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to hold in the midway position for 10 to 15 seconds. Now again, I'm trying to push this back. Everything is shaking. The whole leg is shaking. You don't want to try and open this up like this. You want to stay with both parts of your hip bones facing neutral forward. You're keeping your spine neutral. This is all engaged. My shoulder is not here. My shoulder is nice and activated at the back over here. And this is really dying right now. All of this is dying. And the amount of wobbling and shaking I'm doing, oh, that means you're getting close to failure. Hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, so we're going to do a push exercise, a push up. Now here, let me just show you what I mean. Now imagine that my, imagine that I'm on my toes, right? You can see this is very arched where, oops, you can see that here, my spine is arched. It's not touching the pipe. So you want your push up to be where you're like this, where there is no gap in between. So a neutral spine, straight line from your head to your butt with no major gaps here in the lower back, okay? Otherwise, if you're failing, that's the part that's going to arch. So now imagine what that looks like when you're doing the actual push-up. This is a good push-up. Everything is tucked. This is, my head is not touching the pipe. This is my, my spine is gone. My pelvis is not tucked. Now my pelvis is tucked. My uh, core is activated. My head is neutral. I'm not sinking into my shoulders and collapsing. This is active. Shoulders are active and I'm already shaking. The whole body's already shaking. I haven't even started the exercise and I'm already shivering. Okay. Now five down, eight up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, if that's too much, you do it on your knees. Again, no arching. Stay neutral. Head is back. Shoulders are on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, it's very easy to mess up your shoulders. So be careful that your shoulder blades are not collapsing and losing form. Now, this is the push exercise as a push-up. Another way you can do this is on the bench. So this is another way you can do a push variation. Obviously, this is the one that people will pursue in the gym if they want to make really big pec chest muscles because in the push up, you're basically dealing with body weight. But here in a chest press or a bench press, you can take as much weight as you want. So, but the concept is the same. This is a push movement for the chest. So coming down slow with eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, 
three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You do this four times. It's already shaking. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then hold it in the halfway point for 10 to 15 seconds. Don't let, don't let the gravity push the dumbbell down. You're continuously resisting gravity, pushing away from the floor for about 15 seconds so that you know that it's getting close to failure and everything is shaking to keep it in place. Don't let it come down. That's another variation of a chest push movement. If you if you want to do push movement here, you can do upper body push this way. This is like a fly. This would be a, where you're going wide and coming in a circle. Or if you want to do a straight push, you can do a push like this. And do five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, not out and open, just unengaged, keeping your core engaged, keeping your head neutral, shoulders down, and then you hold it here for the last 15 seconds till you fail. Okay, so this is going to be a pull movement. I'm just reminding you about form is this is what neutral will look like, not this, not this, okay? So this is just a reminder to look for a neutral spine. And once you get used to it, it'll be very difficult for you to do this wrong, all right? Now we're going to do a pull movement. The, this is gonna use your chest and upper back. The idea of putting half of your weight into the bench is so that you get some weight off of your lower back. All right, because this is a chest and upper back movement. This is a pull movement. So again, slow five up and then eight. And you're not trying to do it from here. This is not engaging your upper back. So start where your shoulder blade is set back and go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now some people will do this also, which is fine. Make sure you're not out like that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. And now the thing is you don't want any breaks although I've been stopping and talking to you all, the idea is to keep the pressure on. No rest at the end of the five, no rest at the end of these eight. You keep going for four rounds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna wait here now for 10 to 15 seconds. Holding, holding, shaking. That way you know, and then as you keep getting stronger, you'll move this up. So this is a 7.5 kg. I think this is too easy for me. So I, next time I do it, I'll do it with 10 kg. So you do it on this side, and then you flip it and you do it on the other side. So this is a variation of an upper body pull where you wanna keep this at shoulder level and pull back. So if it's too long, then you can make it short. And then again, not this, keeping your shoulders down, shoulders back. Don't be out like that. Keep everything on and you're pulling. So this is a variation you can do for the pull movements and make the band as difficult as it needs to be for you to fail with the five slow and the eight slow 
the same way we did with the dumbbells. Okay, so now we're doing bicep, five up, eight down. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason I'm doing it sitting is because I can't use my legs to cheat. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. I can feel everything shaking now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No cheating, no jerking. And then you hold it over here halfway. Everything's shaking. Resist the tendency for it to drop to the ground. Keep pushing. Hold. For 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, now we're doing tricep. Now with tricep, it's called a skull crusher because if you're not careful, you will crush your skull. So you go down for five and you go up for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now what you don't want is this happening because that becomes a chest, core, everything is involved. You want to keep your elbows exactly where they are and only have the dumbbells go back. Two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. Keep elbows steady. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Everything's shaking right now. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hold it halfway, 10 to 15 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Whoa. Yeah, I might just crush my skull if I'm not careful. So this is how you can replace the tricep dumbbells. You do a tricep pushback where you're straightening out. Eight slow like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, same thing with the dumbbells. You're not, you're not doing all of this to get the triceps. You're staying very stable. The elbows are not moving and you are only moving from the elbow backwards. That's one way to do the tricep. And another way to do the tricep would be overhead where you put it on something higher up. And again, this is the flexibility that you have with bands is you can just change the position wherever you want where you set this up and you can do triceps this way. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. If you're feeling like it's not enough tension, because right now it's feeling too light for me, so I might hold it over here to make it tight and keep my elbows like in the skull crusher position. Again, I'm not like this, I'm tucked. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. You can see everything's shaking now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that hold, 15 seconds, where your triceps are the only ones really push to the limit, but everything is helping. All the other muscles are helping. Even my legs are shaking, core is shaking. The whole body is responding to this. And hold that. Don't let the res resistance band shrink. You're pulling away from the wall, keeping your core engaged, not popping out like this, staying on, staying on the whole time. Okay, now again, we're trying to do, this is going to be, um, flies like this, which you can also do on the bench. Um, and I'll show you that variation also. But you're basically trying not to keep your shoulders crunched up like this, down here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the thing is, you could put a band below your feet and do this. Only thing is, if you try to go heavy on this, it's going to start giving you pressure on your lower back. So I'll show you how to do it with the variation. So this is a chest fly. You can see it's gonna be easier to take heavier weights this way, because my back is safe on the bench. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, everything is shaking. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, no breaks. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then hold it here at the halfway for 10 to 15 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine, ten, twelve. See, everything's shaking. It's beginning to fail because all the muscles are trying to help stay here. And a fly is this, okay? And a chest press, chest press is this. This is a press. This is overhead press. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. You can see everything's shaking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, obviously when it blue gets too easy, you go for something harder. So once you've done four rounds of the five plus eight, you hold halfway, 10 to 15 seconds. Don't resist, don't let the band shrink. Keep going, this is a bit too light for me. So make sure you push it till failure where you can't hold it any longer. This is the dumbbell variation of the overhead press. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You Again, the same posture rules always apply. One, two, three, four, five. You don't want to be out like that. You want to be on. Three, eight. No breaks. Two, three, four, 
five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five. It's really burning and shaking now. We don't stop when it burns. We stop either when it fails to go up or we hold it at this point for 10 to 15 seconds where I'm really actually not, I'm not able to get this to go higher. It's just kind of stuck. So wherever it's stuck, you push against that for 10 to 15 seconds. Everything's failing, 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 and your brain will decide that this is when I need to build on more muscle and get stronger the next day. Okay, so this is a plank to push the core to failure. Again, a lot of things to be careful about in a plank. You don't want your head like this. You want to be up here. You don't want your shoulders to be like this. Push away from the floor. You don't want your back to be arched and your spine is, your pelvis is not tucked. This is a bad spine. You want to be active. You want your core to be on. Your pelvis is tucked and everything is active from your fingers to your toes. And you want to do this till you fail, not till it burns and it's uncomfortable. Right now, you can, I don't know if you can tell, everything is shaking because this is what I'm finishing with. My whole body has been pushed to failure. So I'm already failing, shaking, but I'm going to stay here till I fail and I can't hold it anymore. One of the things that will count as failure is if I start doing this, then it means I failed. So these are resistance bands. They come with these nice handles and each of them has a color. The color means a different kind of resistance. So this blue one is 13 kgs, red is nine kgs. Uh, the yellow is probably the easiest one and black is the toughest one. Those are on the other side, I think. So yellow is four and a half kg, black is 22 kg and the green one is 18 kg. So right now, I have the blue one attached at both ends. The rest of them are just dangling. And the blue one is attached. So that means I have a resistance of, at the peak, 13.6 kg. So let's say that I want to do a lateral raise with bands, because bands are easy for you to carry in your luggage. So a lateral raise would be Now, in terms of form, you don't want to do this. You don't want to let go of your spine, right? So you don't want to do this. You, don't want to, you want to be tucked and strong, and then you're going like that. Your shoulders away from the ears. But you're trying to keep your shoulders away from your ears the whole time. This is how you would use bands for a lateral raise. Similarly, if you want to use bands for, let's say, a bicep curl, you don't have the dumbbells with you, you've got this in your luggage, you want to do a bicep curl, you can keep it like this. You're going to go slow up and very slow down for bicep. Similarly, for each of the workouts, you can basically change the band color and attach it to something in your hotel room or some big piece of furniture or a door frame where you can wrap it around something that's heavy enough that if you're strong, you won't pull it with you. Something like that, which is big and strong. Loop this around there and then you can pull. So there are so many ways you can be creative and this would be your traveling workout.